We see this throughout the Bible. The Bible talks about this subject more than we're comfortable with. Probably the, 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 the most noted area is a book called The Song of Solomon or The Song of Songs. I did a series on it a few years ago that you, you can listen to if you want more on that. What's intriguing about this book is just the fact that most of us are bothered that it's in the Bible. I mean, it, 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 it really shocks us. When I was growing up, this is not an exaggeration. I've told you this before. When I, I was growing up, um, I, I was really conflicted in this area. I, I loved Jesus from an early age. I did. God gave me a grace to love him. I wanted to honor him, glorify him. Uh, and in this area of human sexuality, I didn't hear a whole lot from the church. Really, all I ever heard occasionally was the word don't. Don't. Good boys don't. Good girls don't. Good people don't. Spiritual people don't. All I heard was don't. And I drew a conclusion. Maybe it's the reason I want to preach about it is I want people to hear God's yes and not just the don't. Because I kind of came to the conclusion that it was a dirty necessity to move on with humanity. But once you became really spiritual, this thing would go away. But it wasn't going away in my life. And so I, I had this this kind of conflict working inside of me. I, I was at a Sunday sermon kind of like this listening. The, the preacher just wasn't doing it for me that day. I know you don't understand that ever, but it happens to be that he wasn't doing it that day. And so, you know, it, it, you guys are privileged because you have these phones that you can do stuff with. I mean, you can text your friends. You can play word, that word game with your friends. You can, you can do all this kind of stuff. In my day, we couldn't do that. I mean, we were old school. You could try to whisper, but in the church I grew up with, every parent disciplined the kids. In fact, there were just some people who I don't think really had kids looking back, and all they did was look at the kids to see if they could do something to them. And so, I mean, you, you ran, if you, you did notes, you ran. So sometimes you just flip through the Bible to see is there anything better in the Bible than what the dude's saying up there right now. And, and so I, I grabbed the Bible. I had my own Bible under my chair, but I grabbed one of the Bibles from the back of the, from a pew rack, and I'm flipping through it, and I run across the Song of Solomon. I am not exaggerating. I ran across the Song of Solomon. I'm reading, my eyes are getting big. And I'm thinking, I found a misprinted Bible, man. Somehow this thing came into the Bible, and this is the most awesome thing in the world. I'm planning in my, my mind, how do I get this Bible home? Because I do not want to let this Bible go. But I had this novel thought. Maybe it's not. I pulled out my own Bible. I found out it was in my Bible, too. I'd never seen it. No one had ever mentioned it to me. I actually went home, and you know how you have the big holy Bible? On your coffee table, remember those things? I mean, the big oil had to be white, had to have big letters on it, lots of these and thous. We didn't have ours on our coffee table. Somehow it got moved from our coffee table to a, a, a shelf, which says something about our household at that point. Uh, but I looked it up, and even there, it had even the big book. I mean, the big one had this in there. And I was amazed, but I wasn't going to talk to anyone about it because no, they weren't mentioning it. Why should I mention it? I mean, there was passages like this. I'm just going to read it to you. And it's going to feel really awkward. Solomon says, how beautiful are your sandaled feet, O prince's daughter. Your graceful legs are like jewels, the work of a craftsman's hands. Your navel is a rounded goblet that never lacks blended wine. Your waist is a mound of wheat encircled by lilies. Your breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes are the pools of Heshbon by the gate of Bat Rabim. Your nose is like the Tower of Lebanon looking towards Damascus. Your head crowns you like Mount Carmel. Your hair is like royal tapestry. The king is held captive by its tresses. How beautiful you are, and oh, how pleasing, oh, love, with your delights. Your stature is like that of the palm, and your breasts like the clusters of fruit. I said, I will climb the palm tree. I will take hold of its fruit. May your breast be like the clusters of the vine, the fragrance of your breath like the apples, and your mouth like the best of wine. And you look at me like, that's really not in the Bible, is it? Did he just say what? I yes, he did. Now, please hear, I understand there's cultural images in here. So, guys, I'm just going to give you a little clue. Don't use images out of the Song of Solomon and try to woo your girl, okay? <laughs> if you tell her her waist looks like a mound of wheat, you're going to get slugged, dude. Your nose, oh, your nose, baby's like a tower. I mean, <laughs> it's not going to work too well for you. But we get the image. Some of you, I mean, we're really bothered. If I had not told you that was in the Bible, some of you would be texting me on your phones right now saying, Jesus followers don't talk that way. Here's the problem. God does. And that tells you we have overreacted. 
And any time we overreact to what culture does in the name of just doing the opposite and we go from idol and God to gross and we don't stand in the heart of biblical truth, we will not be heard in an area because you don't walk in purity by saying no. You walk in purity by saying yes. And what we want to do is say yes to what God proclaims for you and I in our lives.